Hey guys, back with another Fuckery Friday, and in this week's Fuckery, we're talking about protein and cancer. Now, after the Game Changers video came out, oh my god, not another Game Changers video. Uh, it's just extremely popular right now, and I'm having to <coughs> deflect bullshit questions and statements like I'm Neo in the Matrix. I was in a discussion with uh, Dr. Garth Davis on Instagram. Now, I generally like Garth. Him and I have had good engagements. Usually when I was uh, shitting on dumb statements from keto zealots and carnivore zealots, uh, Garth would give me a lot of praise, which is nice. But you know, everyone loves me when I crush bullshit. Until I crush their bullshit. Garth was defending the film which I, quite frankly, I think is mind blowing and indefensible. If I was a, a science based vegan, I would be pissed about this film because it makes everybody look bad. But he said, somebody mentioned that, you know, plant protein is lower in leucine. And so animal protein is a higher quality source of protein because it has more leucine, which is exactly what the research I did in graduate school kind of supports. Now, if you eat enough plant protein, you can get enough leucine to where you still get the same benefits of muscle building, but you have to eat more protein. Garth says, well, leucine is exactly what you don't want. And what he is referring to is basically, I've seen him make statements about leucine activating a complex called mTOR. Now mTOR is a complex in cells that is responsible for activating muscle protein synthesis. So basically you eat protein or leucine, this stimulates mTOR, mTOR turns on protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is part of the anabolic process. One way you can treat cancer is by giving something called rapamycin. Rapamycin is an inhibitor of mTOR. In fact, mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. So this has led a lot of people to say things like, well, leucine causes cancer or protein causes cancer. Okay, so we're gonna go big picture first and then we're gonna narrow down. So if protein caused higher rates of cancer, we should see higher mortality rates amongst meat eaters versus non-meat eaters. And when we look at mortality rates amongst health-seeking meat eaters versus health-seeking non-meat eaters, vegans, there's no difference in mortality. There was a study done on uh, 11,000 people. There was also a study done in Australia on 243,000 people examining meat eaters versus non-meat eaters, saw no difference in mortality. So again, we, we don't see that. So on a big level, that statement doesn't seem to hold up. Now, there was also a recent systemic review and meta-analyses of studies done on meat consumption. Basically, the meta-analysis concluded that the evidence that meat causes cancer is very weak and there's no reason to, or there's little reason to suggest curtailing our meat intake. I don't want you guys to take that full to the extreme. I'm not saying only eat steaks and you can eat as much uh, fatty beef as you want, all that kind of stuff. It's not what I'm saying. But if we narrow a little bit more focus down from the 10,000 foot view we just took, yes, leucine stimulates mTOR. Yes, inhibiting mTOR can help stop uh, cell growth. But there is a big difference between long-term, low-level stimulation of a complex versus acute truncated responses. The stimulation of mTOR in response to leucine is not something that goes on perpetually. It's very short. It only lasts a few hours. Now, it always blows my mind how many scientists don't understand acute versus chronic responses. Let me give you a perfect example of this. We all know that inflammation, free radicals, high blood pressure, and elevated heart rates are really bad for you. They're linked to disease. Guess what happens when you work out? You have high inflammation, high reactive oxygen species, elevated blood pressure, and elevated heart rate. So if I didn't give you any more information about exercise and you had no, like you had no knowledge of what exercise actually did, you would say, well, that's a really bad thing. Don't do that. But what does exercise do over the long term? Lowers blood pressure, lowers inflammation, lowers free radicals, lowers heart rate. You can't look at a short-term response and assume that the long-term response will be the same. That's not how it works. Yeah, you might've just made a fact just now. That's some real shit. Let me also give you another example with mTOR specifically. Guess what also drastically increases mTOR activity for a really long period of time, much longer than leucine. Resistance training. 
Resistance training can elevate mTOR for like four to 48 hours. If mTOR is causing cancer, if these responses are causing cancer, then resistance training should cause way more cancer than protein intake. But we, again, we don't see that. Resistance training is associated with lower mortality. And that's because you can't just look at one pathway and draw conclusions. It is the overall breakdown of an overall lifestyle that makes the difference. That is why you see associations between heart disease and inflammation with uh, higher calorie fatty cuts of meat but you don't see that with people who consume lean cuts of meat. Um, in fact, some randomized control trials have shown that if you feed lean sources of meat as part of an overall healthy diet that's calorie controlled, you see improvements in inflammation. And in fact, there was one study that compared high protein from a vegan protein source versus high protein from animal protein sources, both diets in a calorie deficit, and both diets caused a reduction in inflammation to the same extent. So again, you can't just look at an individual pathway. And I would think that Garth knows this, but I think because Garth is a vegan and he, I believe at his core, he is a vegan for ethical reasons based on things he has said. If you want to be a vegan for ethical reasons, I want to really emphasize this. That is fine. I, I, I commend you for that. I have no problem with that. It seems like a perfectly logical reason to do it. But don't try to retroactively play fuckery with the science to make it fit your bias. It's not necessarily a healthier lifestyle. In fact, you can get heavily processed vegan foods that actually cause more inflammation than animal-based foods. There was a study done looking at cheese, either from vegan cheese or an from regular animal cheese, and they found that the inflammatory responses to the meal were higher with the vegan cheese. Vegan doesn't necessarily mean healthier. Your overall lifestyle is gonna determine how healthy you are. Damn, that's some quantum shit right there, man. What are you talking about? You should be teaching classes, you stay dropping out. All right, guys, if you got triggered by this video, please like it. If you loved the video, please click the links in the description. Buy some of my stuff, because when you buy my stuff, it helps support these videos and getting you guys more great information. I'll catch you next week. Damn! Hey, that's some plausible shit right there. You should block me. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on my space. <laughs> you do it then. <laughs> oh, hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like these videos, please click the links in the description to check out some of my educational books where you can learn more about fat loss and contest prep. 